And our next guest is a recurring guest, and uh, she is she's hitting home runs every time we're here. This is a football show. I should say scoring touchdowns. But listen, she crushes it. So before, uh, you know what? Let's just take a trip. Let's get on board. Let's take a trip to the aisle, fantasy aisle. Welcome to our fantasy island. Oh, joining us right now is one of our favorite, favorite guests. Uh, you see her work all over the place. I don't want to, I don't want to undersell what she does. She is one of the brightest minds in all of fantasy football. Please welcome to the show, Samantha Praviti. Hi. Samantha, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. And you just made me feel so good with that intro. So, oh my gosh, listen, <laughs> we had, we had MJ Acosta Ruiz and I said, we have to have a superstar follow her because a lot of people would shriek and they would not be like, I can't follow MJ, but you know what? We, we I said, get, get Samantha on. I know she can handle it. Uh, so we're delighted to have you back once again. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I, I, you know, it's, it's been busy, but it's been fun. That was a very eventful trade deadline. Uh, oh yeah. Not as eventful as maybe I had hoped for in terms of like fantasy impacts, but certainly a fun one to experience. And I hope that the future ones are like that. And now we've got ski season because it's snowing Ooh. outside in Breckenridge, which is so much fun. I know a lot of people don't like snow. I just wanted to snow every single day, 365 days a year. You were the only person I know who loves <laughs> like are you nobody loves snow more than you. And it's always a delightful to follow you on social media because you're out there snowing as much as possible, even in the spring, when you think that the snows melt, if you found a yard of snow, you're out there on a board. So uh I know that you love that. And I know that you love the trade deadline. Speaking of which, you just mentioned it a moment ago. Who were some of the big I know it wasn't as quite as eventful as you said, but who are some of the biggest winners from the trade deadline? Look, I'm just salty because I thought that there were going to be more moves specifically from the Packers, which I just thought would have been great for a lot of fantasy values and stuff like that. And now we've got Brandon Cooks, like not even playing in this game. So RIP to those who drafted Brandon Cooks. Oh, uh, no. Yeah. So, I, I mean, at least for the winners, like I think a couple of these are like mutual winners, like the 49ers and Christian McCaffrey are winners. Sorry to the, my my Carolina Panthers, but yeah. <laughs> Christian McCaffrey is a winner of this trade. I mean, he's out there doing triple threat things, throwing <laughs> touchdowns, catching touchdowns, running for touchdowns. So that's just going to be a great thing for him, obviously, with uh, the 49ers love to love to run the ball and it's 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 going to be a great fit there and obviously the 49ers are going to benefit a lot from having a, a RB1 type caliber guy on the team especially with their like Elijah Mitchell seemed like he was going to be the guy last year but he's been banged yeah. up all season he may be coming back but like who knows how long there could be durability issues there so i think that's a really good fit and then Kirk Cousins vis-a-vis -vis TJ Hawkinson Really big win wins on uh, both sides of that. TJ Hawkinson gets a huge upgrade at quarterback and gets to bounce right into a contending team, like a team that yeah. could win the NFC. And Kirk Cousins gets a big upgrade getting a, another massive weapon. I mean, it, it, Justin Jefferson and Dalvin Cook are obviously super impressive. Adam Thielen is impressive. But TJ Hawkinson is a top tight end. He's young. He's, he, I mean, he's just a touchdown magnet. So he'll be a huge upgrade from Irv Smith, who is actually out now with a high ankle sprain. Yeah, I really love that move for TJ Hawkinson. Just number one, going from Detroit to Minnesota has got to be a world of difference. <laughs> and, you know, I know everybody loved the Lions coming into the season, but it's 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 fun. Like KOC's done a great job there in Minnesota. As much as I like to der der deride them and make fun of the Minnesota <laughs> Vikings, I got to give them credit. They've been playing very well. They're six and one. I don't want to take anything away from them. But, you know, this is a Bears podcast. I'm wearing a, as far as you know, a Chase Claypool jersey. <laughs> don't, look at, don't look at the name on the back. We don't need to worry about that. We don't need to worry about the 100th anniversary patch from two years ago. <laughs> None of that matters. Uh, Chase Claypool. I think this was a huge get for the Bears. Obviously, I'm too close to it to be objective. What do you think about Chase Claypool going to the Bears, and what do you think it could mean to this offense? I think it can mean a lot. I, I, you know, maybe there was a little bit of talk about that the Bears giving up a little bit much to get Clay, yeah. Chase Claypool because he was a second round pick in 2020 and maybe hasn't lived up to that 
quite hyped. Like he's just been up and down, but you, and you also have to put that in context, right? Like look at the quarterbacks that he's been catching passes from. Right. And it was just like a senescing Ben Roethlisberger. And now it's Mitch Trubisky or Kenny Pickett. And it was just a mess for him. So um, I think that that was a great deal. I was glad to see that he was kind of on the trading block. And I think that the uh, move makes sense for both sort of parties because the bears have obviously been bereft of like depth at the wide receiver pass catching position. And uh, I think it's a great sign for the Bears nation that uh, the team seems to be investing in Justin Fields, which they should have been from the start. Honestly, I have been a big Justin Fields fan for a while. Uh, I was like on an island. The first thing that Action Network had me do is go on like a three person panel and argue about who the 49ers should take number three overall last year. And of course, I went Justin Fields and, you know, um, but yeah, no, I mean, I guess I was just a little too early in my Justin Fields hype, but now he's, he's starting to look good and he's going to look even better with this big bodied receiver, 6'4", 238 pounds, runs a 4'4". So I think he's got that really big play potential and it's going to be really exciting for fantasy. So I think it's an upgrade for Chase Claypool as well. You know, that hit that you did for the Action Network, I think was one of the first things that I saw from you. And that I, but no, I was, and this is, but this was before the draft even happened. Cause I agreed right. with you. I was like locked in because coming into that draft, I was even making the, the observation of that. Why is Justin Fields not being considered to be on the same level as, as Trevor Lawrence? Because both of them were contemporaries all the way back in high school through college. We saw Justin Fields outplay him in a nationally televised playoff game. And it was always baffling to me. And I'm like, I, the Jets were just going to take Zach Wilson. It's like, whatever. <laughs> but the 40, I agreed with you. And I was actually really concerned about it because I'm like, I don't want the 49ers to get Justin Fields. Mm-hmm. I thought that would have been a great move for them. So I remember, I re, I specifically remember <laughs> that. And so uh, I remember that I was like, yeah, I go, I agree with, uh, with, with, with Samantha here, by the way, I want to remind the perception. It's like, it's this, the way that Justin Fields profiles. And I feel like it's just this perception. And I know that there's like a a disconnect sometimes between like fantasy and, and actual NFL, but there is also this like disconnect between like very traditional pocket passers being like the archetype that they want to draft really early. But uh, Justin Fields gets it done on the ground and through the air. And it's just exciting to watch. So I'm a big fan. (laughs) No, I I agree. And that's the funniest thing is that, you know, look at the quarterback that the 49ers drafted. And this was the point that you were making is that you want the 49ers were going to draft a quarterback who is athletic, could make plays with his arms and his legs. You're like, that's what Justin Fields does. Like, why aren't you taking the guy who is blowing up in a power five conference, as opposed to a guy who barely played at North Dakota state? It never makes sense. to me. It'll never <laughs> make sense to me. Never, ever. But you know, it does make sense playing fantasy football on underdog fantasy. That's right. Underdog fantasy is the easiest way to play fantasy sports. It's simple to get started. Just head to underdogfantasy.com or download the app. Sign up using the promo code SICK and Underdog will double, double your first deposit up to $100. Listen, if you if you drafted Kyle Pitts and your season's over, you can go to Underdog Fantasy right now. There's a host of games you can go out there and play. Your fantasy season is never over. Underdog Fantasy is the place to be. By the way, download the Underdog Fantasy app just to keep up with everything that's going on. Brandon Cook's news, anything like that, you get the updates comes on your phone. You're like, oh, this guy's not playing. Isaiah Likely. Oh, I should go bit, go pick him up. Whatever it is, Underdog Fantasy, download the app. And, of course, you know, want, want, want your deposit doubled? Just go use the code SICK and uh, you'll be well on your way. All right. Uh, speaking of traditional fantasy leagues, though, we know this week is what some people refer to as buy and six teams on a buy. We see a lot of big-name quarterbacks out, including Dak Prescott, Who are some of the best streaming options at the quarterback position this week? Sure. My favorite is Justin Fields, and that has nothing to do with this being a Bears podcast. He was headlining my waiver wire article this week. Uh, He was 41% rostered entering this waiver wire cycle. I was actually pretty worried about starting him against the Dallas defense last week, but Mm -hmm. because they entered the week as the number two defense, according to defensive DVOA, uh, had his best fantasy performance to date. I mean, two touchdowns through the air, also rushed for a touchdown, QB5. I mean, He's just been trending upwards after starting pretty rough 
uh, is the QB six on a per game basis since week five. He's averaging 53 rushing yards per game, which obviously gives him a super nice floor. And look at this uh, schedule he's got ahead of him. I mean, it's not just a one week type fill in thing. Dolphins, Lions, Falcons, those are all very exploitable offenses all rank bottom eight in defensive DVOA. So I think that he will be very much in the QB one conversation for the next three weeks. If you missed out on Justin Fields, fear not because you could pick up Taylor Heineke who kind of falls into that same Ooh. category of a dual threat type guy. He was only 7% rostered entering the week. I talked about him as a potential fill in for Mahomes or Justin Herbert managers. He performed pretty well uh, QB eight for the week and it's his second week in a row finishing as a top 13 quarterback so I think he should be considered at least a high-end QB2 maybe fringe QB1 against the Vikings who are allowing the fourth most passing yards this year and then last one I'm going to mention is Andy Dalton uh he was I mean I was all about him last week and he was pretty yeah. good against the Raiders as they completely just shut out that team which is not the game script that I thought was going to happen but sir had 17 fantasy points in each of the last two games so I mean it seems like it's going to be Andy Dalton moving forward over uh, Jameis Winston. So I think that he is going to be another sort of high end QB two fringe QB one with six teams on by. Yeah. I remember last week I, I saw that you had, you had advocated picking up Andy Dalton and it was one of those things that you're like, ah, it makes a lot of sense. And he, as you said, he scored 17 fantasy points, but that's because the Raiders were so bad. If the Raiders would have done their job, Andy Dalton would have had to keep, keep throwing and then he would have ended up with like 30 points. So that was an excellent pick. Exactly. <laughs> I want to talk about another quarterback. And again, this is the Bears podcast. So I think we need to talk about him. MJ and I were talking about Tua Tonka Vailoa. Now, obviously, he's off the waiver wire by now. He's been playing really well. Do you think now, I, if you're sitting there and you're playing season long and you have Tua on your roster, are there many quarterbacks that you should be playing over him? Because I, I'm, I'm having a hard time coming up with a number of quarterbacks who are playing better than him, especially in fantasy. Yeah, I mean, there's a select list of guys, but like you're playing Tua over Aaron Rodgers, over Tom Brady, over Russell Wilson, like all those guys that we've expected to be good this year for sure. Um, he's the consensus ranked QB7 for the week right now, was the QB1 last week in a very soft matchup against the Lions. I mean, everyone carves up the Lions, but he's finally looking healthy, should be a mid QB1 this week. I mean, he's got the, we the weapons are just a really big thing. Like Tyreek Hill can just perform with anyone under center. And I'm not, that's not a knock on Tua. That's just saying that they have really surrounded him with the, you know, the pass catchers. And uh, this week, I think that he he'll perform pretty well. I mean, Chicago is definitely below average in past DVOA and have lost some key defensive pieces. So I think that he'll be a QB one this week and I believe in him. Yeah. I, I don't want to say bad things about the Bears, So I'll let you I know. <laughs> what about, uh, you know what? Uh, I think most fantasy enthusiasts should be on Roheem Mostert this week, especially in DFS or anything, props, whatever you're doing, I think he might end up being the RB1. What do you think about Raheem Mostert? I mean, yeah, he's a bit of a dud last week. If you can buy low on Raheem Mostert, that's not a bad idea. There's no more Chase Edmonds in the picture to sort of muddy the waters. I mean, I know we've got Jeff Wilson Jr., but I'm, I'm not as worried about him. Bears are allowing the fourth most fantasy points to running backs, bottom five in rush DVOA. Sorry, but, uh, sorry about that. But that's I'm that's just the reality and how I look at matchups, of course. Um, they were obviously carved up by just pretty much everyone except the 49ers running backs in week one. So uh, it's just a very good matchup. So he should be a high-end RB2 with RB1 like upside. He's definitely a really good play this week. One of my favorite receivers in the NFL – Bro had a monster game last week, and that is DJ Moore. Yes. Is he fully back? I mean, PJ, he's been he's been playing great with PJ Walker. Is it safe to say that DJ Moore is a must start now? Yes. Next question. Just kidding. But yes, <laughs> uh, averaging 10 and a half targets per game in the last two weeks. So he's just getting peppered there. Scored in both games, wide receiver eight and wide receiver five and half PPR in those games. Um, one of those was against Atlanta. I get it. They're they're pretty Swiss cheesy, but the other one was Tampa Bay, whose defense ranks top six in past DVOA. So, I mean, and like, obviously what sticks in our head is that just crazy catch at the end of the game, yeah. which then the Panthers decidedly blew, like blew, oh. which it was just so Eddie, painful to watch. But our guy, Eddie P, yeah. 
<laughs> but at least, uh, yes, DJ Moore is back in my good graces as a high-end wide receiver too. But yes, I that game was very painful to watch. <laughs> oh, we love Eddie P still in Chicago, although we've oh, done we've done pretty he did well win with that our... kicking competition, right? <laughs> I mean, it is. We we moved on from him. We brought in Cairo. So it was like, I, I think we're okay. Um, we still wish him well and everything like that. Speaking of uh, trades or competitions, anything like that, I know the trade deadline for a lot of traditional fantasy leagues are coming up really quick. Are there any players out there that fantasy managers should be looking at to make trades for? Sure. There's definitely some guys that I like. I like DeAndre Swift coming off of a shaky week eight against the Dolphins. He gets the Packers Swiss cheese run defense this week. So your window will probably close fast to buy low on him. But also I think that he will see an uptick in targets with the loss of TJ Hawkinson. Uh, Devontae Adams, definitely another guy that you could buy low on after being a complete dud in week eight uh that broke a streak an 81 game streak without multiple catches in a game uh and uh they have a pretty nice schedule rest of season so i don't think he's broken and i don't think Derek Carr's broken i just think they really everything good off the rails in that game uh i'm on ross st brown another lion no hawkinson has been okay not great after starting the season super strong so i think it's a good time to buy low just because he will be the number one target in that offense um khalil herbert I like this guy. I have Ooh. liked him for a while. Yeah, he out, uh, was out snapped by Montgomery 52 to tw- uh, 55 to 22 last game, but was just much more productive with his time on the field. 16 carries for 99 yards and a touchdown. His yards per attempt this year, 6.2. Montgomery's 3.9. So he's just much more efficient when he's on the field. I like watching the guy. So I think that he could end up at least being in a 50 50 timeshare maybe taking over the role more more so than um from montgomery and then the last guy i'm going to say is antonio gibson maybe we wrote him off for dead a little too fast um i do love brian robinson don't get me wrong but uh similar usage to robinson on the ground but gibson is seeing the, the work through the air uh seven catches for 58 yards and a touchdown robinson's not involved there at all so especially if you're in ppr formats i really like looking at gibson there it's so amazing that Antonio Gibson was a receiver in college. They didn't really yes. work him in that way until recently. And I always made the joke, like anybody who auto picks, you didn't have, because like everybody faded Antonio Gibson during yes. the, during the preseason. Well, the dude's during catching August. punts, probably like handing out towels. I mean, I, yeah. <laughs> during the preseason. Yeah, it, it's true. And so the people who didn't pay attention to the preseason still drafted him. And now they're like, oh, I've got this excellent player. All of us who know so much uh, mo- moved on to Brian Robinson. And now we're we're sitting here looking at it like, yeah, that, not me, though. I mean, like other people. But uh, <laughs> no, search my tweets. I even said that same thing in August. I'm like, everybody's going to regret passing on Antonio Gibson. But still, I, I also like Kyle Pitts and Dalton Schultz. So don't. You don't have to hey, always Kyle listen. To sounds, you know, Kyle Pitts is on the redemption track now. So I, I'm, I'm I really hoping. So. <laughs> I hope so, too. If, if Arthur Smith wants to keep his job, he needs to start feeding the talented uh, pass catchers that he has. And that's Drake London and Kyle Pitts. And the fact that they're allergic to the forward pass just makes me so angry for fantasy. It is crazy. It, it goes to show you, too. I think if you look at the if you look at the numbers, when Kyle Pitts has over 80 yards, that team wins. Like, it's very simple. Like, you you get wow, the same information him. that we do. Beat him. <laughs> Ground baking. <laughs> Force it to him. Force the ball into his hands. Have him take direct it's just snaps. So clear that, it's just so clear that they don't trust Marcus Mariota. And, like, you know, when he, the guy's throw, completing eight passes in a game, it's, it's just really hard for a guy like Kyle Pitts to have the upside that we hoped for. So I don't think this is the Kyle Pitts problem. I think it's um, – Arthur Smith, Marcus Mariota problem. 100%. And I, I don't think that it's uh, very pleasant for Desmond Ritter either, because at some point, if you don't like Marcus Mariota that much, but you still don't want to go to the rookie, I don't know what's going to be happening with the Atlanta Falcons. Perhaps they're playing for a quarterback next season. But listen, <laughs> want to thank you. Want to thank you for stopping by today. The Action Network is where they can find you. Where else can people find you and follow your great advice? Yeah, definitely check me out on Twitter at Samantha NFL. That's pretty much where I'm most active. I do random radio spots and stuff. I'm on KOA AM 850 in Colorado every Wednesday talking DFS. So 
check me out there and just various other spots. I'll yeah. So yeah. Follow me on Twitter. Thank you. <laughs> no, we, we see it. No, you always post updates and I'm always amazed by how much you're doing. Your, your, your profile is rising for good reason. You're, you've been crushing it. You've done a really nice job. So we appreciate you coming on being a part of the fantasy aisle as well. I know the fans love it. So we appreciate you being here and uh, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll make this a return trip in the uh, near future. Awesome. Anytime, Adam. Thank you so much for having me.